everybody and welcome to the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. Whether you hate my poetry or you just hate Matt Wall, you have come to the right place. Senors and senoritas. Look at that. Oh, I didn't even know this was fucking lit. I could have fucking burnt my goddamn hair off. Scoop back just so the people who are watching the video feed of this can see. And again, if you would like to watch the videos of this podcast and not just listen to them audibly, if you join the crew on my YouTube page, links will be down below. You will be able to look at the majesty that is my freshly groomed sharp beard and my freshly cut hair that I did myself. Yeah, I was going to go get a fucking haircut with the goddamn barber. And I just fucking, I, I didn't want to risk it. I've been to two barbers in the last 10 years. One of them gave me an amazing haircut. And one of them tried to fuck my head with a chainsaw. So that is where we are. So um, today we are going to be talking about quite a bit of stuff. And I hope you like the little interlude in the beginning there. I'm trying to up my game with all of these um, poetry podcasts that have like a little music bumper at the beginning. So that was my song, Hate Love Kill, that you could find anywhere music is streaming. But anyway, um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So something happened this week, guys. Um, actually, before I get into that, let me get into the um, updates. So again, this podcast should hit on Saturday, maybe Friday. So... Um, if you would like to join the free Poetic Anarchy Crash Course that's being hosted by the Sims Library of Poetry in Los Angeles, um, you can do so. It is Monday, October 17th at 7 p.m. It is virtual and it is free. All you have to do is go to simslibraryofpoetry.org slash events and look for my gorgeous face. And if you're just listening to the audio and you don't know what I'm, what I look like, you're you're fucking missing out. So um, I guess just look for my name, Matt Wall or Poetic Anarchy. And then on this little flyer I've been handing out, it says, "Learn to trust your pen, find your voice, write as therapy, not fear poetry, be more productive, believe in yourself, and be freaking awesome." Is what it says. But I'm going to tell you right now, one of the things that we are going to be doing is there's going to be people from all different um, parts of their writing journey, like different stages. And I want to like kind of give everyone a quick little Q&A right at the beginning and find out what everyone's struggling with and what things are holding them back and what things they want to try to um, get better at. And start from there and then go into everything else. So even if you don't want to participate, but you want to be a fly on the wall to see how people deal with things to get through shit to be able to get to the work, I think this would be a great thing for you. It's free. You have to sign up so you can get the Zoom link. And other than that, it's all good. Next, um, Preview of Dangerous Mind. My new chat book is out now at the Etsy shop. Links will be down below. The Blood Rag um, issue four is also out, and you can pick that up for only a dollar. What's wrong with you guys? Fuck. Give you shit for fucking free, basically, and you guys, oh, Jesus. Um, maybe I'll put another musical interlude here. And we're back. Is this all you have to do to make a fucking podcast? You, like, talk about something, and then music happens and then you talk about more stuff and then music happens and then you start talking again yeah there you go podcasting done sorted so the thing i wanted to talk about today is actually very interesting to me um i don't know what you guys are going to think about this but so i did a video on my youtube channel um a few days ago about defeating imposter syndrome because a lot of people deal with this apparently. It is something that really 
like clouds the mind and it comes from society and is like a cancer that is spread to other people. Not that cancer is contagious, but you know what I'm saying? So I was talking about that and I was shocked. I, I, I won't say shocked. I just didn't think I was going to get the amount of, um, what do you call it? Uh, just the amount of positive feedback I got from it. Um, some people were sharing the video um, on their social media stuff, saying that it really helped them. And I thought that was great. Then the next day, I did a video. I can't remember what it's called, but it was something like, Our Writing Workshop Stupid. Because I got a fucking email from this dude who was actually, like, I, I give him shit, Jacob. Sorry about that, buddy. I give him shit. Like, because he kind of came at me kind of hard, but he didn't come at me, like, hard, hard. Like, I feel like if that email went to other people, they would have lost their shit. You know, someone can say all the fucking shit they want to you, but honestly, if they end an email, or even start an email and end an email, let's have a compliment sandwich here. If you give me a compliment sandwich in an email, I'm not going to get mad at you. And you could vent and give me your fucking bullshit spiel, and I'm not going to fucking lose it. But anyway, so this video I did was a response to an email I got where um, a guy was giving me shit for hawking my poetry workshop class thing and why I do it and don't I think workshops are stupid. So if I think workshops are stupid, why the fuck am I doing this thing? So and I'll link that video too, just so you can have some kind of fucking like idea of what the fuck I'm talking about. And I said what I said. Now the comments for this video were totally different than the comments from the imposter syndrome video. And some of you might be thinking, well, of course they're fucking different. You idiot. That's two completely different things, but it's not, it's the same fucking thing. And here's why. The thing that came up more than anything else in the comments for my Our Workshop Stupid video is the sense of community people feel when they participate in a workshop. That's very important to them. And this might be me having the problems that I have as far as um, things I probably should be on medication for, but I never for a second thought of the social aspect of a writing workshop. Now, for those of you who don't know, I guess I should kind of spill my um, dirty laundry here just to be honest with you guys. I am schizotypal, um, which is not schizophrenic, um, just so all of you guys can calm the fuck down. But it's basically... I've heard it described a couple different ways, but um, the the most the easiest way to understand what schizotypal is is kind of like a catch all for a lot of things. So let's say it like you know those little um, grates you have in the drain of your sink, you know. So like you're doing dishes, you're like rinsing out pots and plates and glasses and all this little food scraps of all different kinds all end up in this grate at the bottom and then you can pick up the grate and throw it away or dump it. Um, schizotypal is that grate and all the nasty food in it is all of my mental problems except I don't get to empty this out or throw it away. You know, manic depression, um, dissociative disorder, PTSD. What the fuck else do I have? Oh, I don't know. There's just like a bunch of fucking things I have and they all fall into this, but they're all based around um, social things like me interacting socially with people and me not being able to understand people. So little things like that. So with that being said, the idea of a writing workshop being something that socially uplifts people who go, I never even considered that as a thing. 
I looked at it as I go here with my poem. Somebody tells me a bunch of stuff about my poem. I change my poem based on what these people say. And then I fucking do something with my poem. And then someone will bring their poem up and I will tell them what to change. And we will all... And here's the other thing too. Like, this happens. But a lot of people say, like, maybe I should just read some of the fucking comments I got. So Regina said, I think workshops can be useful and evil, even fun. Not evil, sorry. And then Regina says, I recall an interview with Anne Rice where she said the problem with writing workshops is that people advise you to write your story or poem the way they would write it. Maybe that's why everything sounds so generic. And then let's see who... Then we have the soft-spoken poet here saying, I've been to both writing and editing workshops. I will say I really enjoy the workshops that provide prompts and instruction. Getting together with a community has helped with writer's block, and I've left some workshops with nice poems that I was able to submit, or at the very least, a new angle or perspective for a new poem. And then I should say what I said to that, because I don't think I should have said it, but um, yeah, I agree with the community aspect. Um, it can be really fun and enjoyable, and I'm sure that the, the poems that come out of workshops get picked up. That's kind of my point. The poems that typically come out of workshops are so watered down, I hate using generalities with this, that they are comfortable for an editor. Am I making any sense here? I feel like I'm rambling. I really do feel like that. Um, I'm just saying that if you were to put poems in front of me from a poet whose work I know... I would be able to tell you which ones were workshopped and which ones weren't. And it wouldn't be based on quality, it would be based on lack of voice. Now, a lot of this too, you would have to watch the video to hear me talk about why I make the statements that I make there. Alan said, um, workshops are fundamental, I think, networking and free editing, etc. Um, and then Shannon said, I kind of agree, though the only workshop I've done was with my creative writing course at university. It was only about 10 people, and we read our work aloud, and others commented. Generally, there wasn't any you should change this type of feedback. It was more positive, and I'd say it boosted my confidence as a writer and made my writing better because of hearing others' work and all the feedback that everyone gave and received. So this is an interesting comment because there generally wasn't any you should change this type of feedback. Okay, so what was the feedback then? Like what, what made it good? At this point, it almost doesn't matter because Shannon says it was positive and boosted my confidence. That, that's really all you ever need. And then um, she says, my writing uh, made my writing better because of hearing others work and the feedback everybody gave and received. Now, I don't know what the feedback is, but I could assume if what this whole thing did was a positive experience and boosted um, Shannon's confidence, I'm assuming it was all just like, yeah, good job. You're doing great. Da -da 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 -da. And that is very crucial. And I'm not trying to like downplay that. Like, as artists, we are our own worst enemies, completely, always and forever, okay? And we need to have cheerleaders because we cannot do a good job cheerleading for ourselves. But when our friends tell, tell us like, oh my God, that's so fucking good, good job. You're like, fuck yeah, dude. Thank you, I feel good about this now. You see what I'm saying? It's really fucking hard for us to do that to ourselves. So I was thinking more and more about just this whole fucking thing, okay? This whole community aspect. As these thoughts were mulling over in my mind and what I would want from a poetry workshop, like not even the one I teach, not even Poetic Anarchy. Like if I were to go to a workshop, what would be the thing that I would want? And I can't put a finger on it. 
would it be good to have people like blowing me telling me how good my shit is? Yes, that always feels good. But is it something I need? I don't think I need it. Like I write my poetry and put it out and people buy it and I feel good that people give a shit, you know? Um, but I don't know if that is something that would make me feel better. And so then I started thinking, I'm like, well, when does a poet stop like really participating in workshops and just start teaching workshops? And then I was like trying to like go through and like find all of these poets like over time. Cause I'm like, did Walt Whitman go to fucking workshops? I don't, I don't know. Like, and then I'm like, well, Sylvia Plath did at the beginning with that Sexton chick at that Lowell place, you know, like that's documented and shit. But how long did that go on? How long did these people like, I know they were friends with Lowell until their deaths, but like, did the workshop thing go on forever? And Ginsburg, you know, like... I know Ginsburg liked to be the life of the party, or at least everyone look at me, I'm speaking now. But like after Howell, like did he like go participate in workshops after that? I don't know. I don't know these things. This is all very bizarre because I still feel deep down that going to a workshop will take your poem and your poem will turn into a camel which is a horse made by committee. We've all heard this analogy thing before. But thinking about it from the sense of community and like build, I guess this is how schools are built, like um, different movements of poetry. This is probably what that is. But as I was thinking about all of this stuff, and I'm not saying this is better or worse, okay? I'm just saying this is how it is. I feel like when a lot of poets are looking at their poem and deciding if they want to workshop this poem or something like that, it's like someone dropping them off in the woods and they look up from their poem and they just, they're looking at a tree. They're like this close to a tree. And they're like, fuck, that's a tree. What do I do with this fucking tree? It's right in my way. Oh, that's a tree. And with me, somebody drops me off in the middle of nowhere with a poem. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the forest. And we have like um, miles of forest. But then I look up and I'm like, that's the moon. I'm going to go get to the moon so I could get around this forest. And that's like the difference of how... Like, at least I go through shit. And I don't know if it's just like a micro-macro kind of fucking thing. But it's... I have to understand that most people don't do things like I do. Most people don't hear the things that I hear. Or, or, or see the things that I see. Like, I'm very cynical. I understand this. And I also look at how motives play and how people take advantage of people based on motives. Shit like that drives me crazy. And so I have a fucking chip on my shoulder. I really fucking do. But at the end of the day, I realize even something like a workshop that will keep someone locked in something... And I say it like this because of this. Okay, so there's this one workshop I know. And again, not every workshop is like this, but I'm giving you an example. There's a workshop I know that costs like 50 bucks a month or something like that. Like it's once a month and it's like 50 bucks and there's some like like really hoity-toity motherfucker in there. You bring them a poem and say, this is my poem and you read it to everybody else and then you get feedback from whoever. And he says... This poem is getting better, but it's not quite there. Bring it back next month. And so I'm sitting here going, and I'm like, how many times does that happen? And he said, three. And I'm like, okay, so you gave this motherfucker 150 bucks. And he just said, your poem's not ready yet? Like, are you fucking for real right now? 
So that kind of thing, that sets me off onto a fucking goddamn, like, like I want to fucking do bad things, you know? Fuck. But I know not all poetry workshops are like that. And I know, I know that there are a lot of workshops that people have as a crew. Like, they're like, oh, me and my homies are going to get together every fucking Wednesday night. And we, like, read each other's poems. And that feels good. And we, like, all, like, build each other up. That's perfect. If that's what you're doing, I fucking love it. And I think you should do it all the fucking time. Especially if it's boosting your confidence. If it's making you feel like you can do this thing. Because that's the most important thing. Because once you feel like you can do something, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, it's this whole bull fucking shit of where, like, we are told we cannot do certain things. So that that's that's my main bitch. But the, the bottom line here is, is that I can see where I was wrong. And I want to apologize to the people who felt like I was attacking them or saying that what they were doing didn't have value. And that's not what I was saying at all. I think that's what, how what I said came out. But after like thinking about all this shit and realizing how many people were talking about the community aspect of it, do you see what I'm saying? I never once thought of the community aspect of it because this is a whole other thing about me. I don't like people very much. Like I understand needs for human connections and all that shit. But if I was like on a desert island for my whole life and never saw another human again. Like I would be fine. I might get horny, but I would be fine. Okay. Like seriously, human connections are never the thing that come into my head whenever anything like this comes up. So that's just my, my two cents, um, about all this shit. Let me just throw this out there too. People have fucking said to me that the way I view like poetry and stuff is like very Marxist, anti-establishment. And yes, it is. I agree with your analysis of me to an extent. But the thing here is, is that I immediately would stop bitching about academia, the literati, any snooty fuck, I would never talk about them again if I didn't fucking hear them talk shit on what I do. Because the second you fucking try to have an argument with me about this shit, bears got claws, you know what I'm saying? So, here is an example of this that is so fucking funny, okay? I'm, I'm just, this is an example of shit I hear all the fucking time. Actually, I'm going to give you two examples that I've heard over the last week. Because I just... Like, who fucking cares? Like, f go fuck yourself. And it's so funny, too. Because it's usually from someone hawking a class or hawking a book. And my examples, one is hawking a class and one is hawking a book. Yeah, I guess I'll fucking say who it is. Like, so, um, Eleanor on the only real property on YouTube. Great channel. One thing I like about her channel more than anything, even though I don't agree with everything she says, I actually agree with more than you would think of what she says. But I love watching people think while they're making a video and kind of the stream of consciousness where they're almost coming to conclusions as they're speaking. Like, that's how I do my videos, you know? And um, I know she probably has notes of things she wants to hit, but as she's talking, like you could, you could see, you could see her thinking, you can see her like placing exactly how she wants to say stuff. And it, I just, I enjoy that, I appreciate that. But, so, she's taking a, um, she just did a video called, um, I discuss 
versification, translation, and the fascinate, and then it cuts off because I can't see what it says. But so she's taking a writing workshop on porosity, which sounds, when you just hear it like that, it sounds like Snooze Fest Central. But some people are into it, and that's fine. And she's really into it. She's having a really good time. She's learning, and she's, like, absorbing shit and really digging it. And I fucking love that. That's cool as shit. But here's the but. Talking about experimental poetry. And there's this dig, and I don't know if this came from Eleanor or if it came from her fucking instructor dude, but they're like, people who um, work with prosody are really the experimental people, and the people who are just like doing other stuff, like that's not experimental at all, just writing down your thoughts. There's nothing experimental about that. So that's a stab at free verse right off the bat. Nobody fucking said, or I haven't fucking said, that what I'm doing is experimental. Like, if there's people out there who say what they're doing is experimental, oh, what what did you do? Well, I took my grocery list and I fucking put a title on it and it is now a poem and this is very experimental. That's silly. But if that's what they do, who fucking cares? Why is it that what people do matters so much? Who fucking cares? Nobody should fucking care. If I want to write a poem like this, I should write the poem and everyone else should fuck off. And if you want to write a poem like that, write that poem and everyone else can fuck off. If this dude over here wants to write a poem like that, do it. And everyone should fuck off. Why is it that the poetry fucking world is so fucking judgmental about other fucking poets in the fucking art? Fuck off. There is enough words out there for everybody. There are enough, there are more readers out there than there are poets. Okay? Now, how a poet gets a reader, that's a whole other fucking topic for a different day. But it's not like we're competing. Like, it doesn't fucking matter at all. So don't drag other fucking artists and other fucking art forms into the shit just to prove the point you're making. Because I could fucking do it and I could do it a lot better than you can. But there's no purpose in it. Because whatever people like is what they like. And that's fine. So who fucking cares? Second, Stephen Fry. This fucking guy. Okay? This fucking guy. Like, he's like a TV percent presenter in the UK. You know? And, like, apparently he's very smart. I think he also hosts a quiz show of some kind. And, like, I'm sure he has letters after his name that mean something to someone somewhere who fucking cares okay he's kind of a funny dude i've watched some of his shit whatever so he writes this book and he says you know and this is what i fucking love when people use an analogy that doesn't fucking work you know if you don't know the rules you can't break them <laughs> Guess what? That doesn't fucking hold up in court. Just ask the orange guy. Because he's going to have to be fucking doing all sorts of that shit. Ignorance to the law does not protect you from it, you fuck. God damn. These people are so fucking stupid sometimes. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. And if somebody shows up later... And says, oh, I see what you did here. This is called a schlagen bluggen bluggen. It's a, it's a type of poetry. And you're like, oh, cool. I don't give a shit. I just fucking did this. Because I'm being creative. And I fucking created. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, man, these fucking people. So anyway, so some fucking dick. Oh, wait, no, that's a Vespa. With a giant fucking pipe on it. This guy's a fucking dick. Uh, 
That's a Vespa. Dude, if you are so worried about getting run over by fucking cars in L.A., get a fucking motorcycle or take the fucking bus. Don't turn your fucking little tiny Vespa into a fucking goddamn hot rod just so people can hear you coming. Douchebag, dude. All right, so anyway. Um, that is all of that. I feel like there was other shit. Oh, and I'll give you a writing prompt. I think I should start doing writing prompts at the end of each fucking uh, podcast. So this writing prompt, I because if you join the Anarchy Crew on my YouTube, you get daily writing prompts. And um, this one was more was more of a, like there's more to it. So basically what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes. Well, first let's make sure you're not driving a car or something. Okay, so let's say you're at your house. You're, you're at your abode, your place of residence where you fucking get mail, okay? And face your bookcase or the giant pile of books that are stacked precariously somewhere. Face that fucking thing. Close your eyes. Put a finger out and walk towards that bookcase. Okay? And then land on a book and then open your eyes and see the book that you're touching. Then spell your name to the right. A letter for each book. So mine would be M-A-T-T. -T. Whatever that book is, take that book out. Okay? Close your eyes again. Open the book and then go like this with your finger and just slam it down. So random page, random part. Look at what you're pointing at in the book. Whatever the book is and whatever that topic is that's being talked about or being written about in that bit, write a fucking poem about that and how it affects and how it relates to your life. You don't even need to talk about the book, but write about that thing. Just a fun little fuck you experiment. Um, so that's kind of all sorts of good and fun. So anyway... Um, Keep buying my books, type hard. You can get all my stuff at my Etsy shop or on Amazon if you want my fiction. Um, or if you want Fingering the Mundane. That's the only place you can get the paperback copy of that right now. Um, make sure you um, sign up for the Poetic Anarchy Crash Course that um, the Sims Library of Poetry is hosting. Um, Blood Rag is out now. What else is there? I don't think there's anything else, darling. I think that's it. All right. So, um, yeah, until next time, type hard and keep buying my books, and I will talk to you guys later. Oh, hey, I'll even, like, have, like, a bumper song on the way out. Should it be a different song? I don't know what song it'll be that you could find on all streaming platform services. So, bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.